the young and the restless spoilers for Friday, July 23rd. Tease that an Ashland lock bombshell will rock Victoria Newman while Billy Abbott warns Sharon Rosales about her devotion to Adam Newman. For starters, Victoria will stumble across something that turns her world upside down. We'll see Victoria discover something shocking that's related to Ashland, so what's it going to be? It's possible Ashland will collapse or something along those lines, but it's also possible something else is going on here. Ashland's terminal illness may not be legit since the show's never offered concrete proof. If Victoria finds some clue that Ashland has been faking or lying to her in some way, that would certainly be cause for concern. Regardless, Victoria will face a shocker and grow fearful. It'll lead to Victoria confronting Ashland eventually and trying to get some real answers, so stay tuned to see what's in store for these two. Even if Victoria doesn't figure out all the facts, she could start to see that Ashland hasn't been entirely honest. Next, Billy will corner Sharon to grill her about her continued faith in Adam. Billy just won't get why Sharon keeps placing her loyalty in the sky, but Sharon has plenty of good reasons, starting with the kidney Adam gave her daughter. Adam saved Faith Newman's life on more than one occasion, so that's a good enough reason to have some faith in him. However, Billy may sense that it's more than that. He might even worry that Adam will lead Sharon down the path of temptation again. It's true that Sharon and Adam have an intense connection that's hard to ignore. With that in mind, Billy will warn Sharon to be careful about her devotion to her ex. He may fear it could lead to trouble as usual and wreck Sharon's renewed commitment to Ray Rosales. Other year spoilers say Elena Dawson will have a warning of her own to pass along. Elena should realize Imani Benedict has been flirting with Nate Hastings again, so she obviously won't approve. It sounds like Elena will push back against Imani and make it clear that her man's off limits. As other year news and updates come in, we'll keep you in the loop. Imani will likely dismiss Elena's words of caution and just do whatever she wants, so the young and the restless spoilers say more issues are brewing. The Young and the Restless Spoilers recap for Thursday, July 22nd, reveals that Tessa Porter will seek Mariah Copeland's clue, and Ben Stitch Rayburn will offer to trace Mariah's texts to find her location. Imani Benedict will also receive an opportunity for a new job, so here's what fans can expect on Thursday's Your episode. At the Grand Phoenix, Michael Baldwin will show up to meet with Imani and Amanda Sinclair. He'll find out their sisters and will check out the recording of such names that Amanda offers up. Amanda will know it's not a concrete confession and might not be admissible in court, but she'll still hope it opens Michael's mind. Amanda will think it's clear from that recording that Sutton had Richard Nealon killed to silence the story of his illegitimate grandchildren. Michael will wonder when Amanda and Imani can get Naya Benedict to his office so they can get the facts straight. Amanda will argue that they'll need time to convince Naya to recant her statement, so Michael will go along with her request for a day or two. In the meantime, Michael will vow to issue a warrant for Sutton's arrest and try to prevent him from leaving the country. He'll point out that the whole thing will go more smoothly once Naya comes clean, so Amanda will promise to make that happen. Afterward, Imani will talk to Amanda about her complicated feelings regarding Sutton. She'll admit that she's done working for him and will share an emotional moment with Amanda, who will be glad she found her sister. Amanda will mention that she's thinking of starting a law firm, where Imani could work once she passes the bar. Amanda will think Sinclair and Benedict has a nice ring to it, so Imani will agree to give the offer some thought. At Devin Hamilton's place, he'll find out Moses Winters is hoping to do something special for Faith Newman. Since Faith's favorite band is Tiger Lily and they happen to be in town for a concert, Devin will hook Moses up with backstage passes. Moses will hope Devin's willing to do one more favor as well, and later, the two of them will set a plan in motion. After Moses joins Faith on the Crimson Lights patio, she'll be stunned to see Kendra and Krista slaw a ball from Tiger Lily up at the counter with Devin. Moses will ask if Faith wants an introduction, so she'll excitedly agree. Soon after, Faith will meet the sisters and take a picture with them. Krista and Kendra will even give Faith a preview of their new song, so she'll really be on cloud nine. Once Tiger Lily leaves with Devin, Faith will figure out that Moses arranged this. Faith will be appreciative, but she won't even remember telling Moses she was a fangirl. However, Moses will insist Faith didn't have to since he pays attention. Devin will eventually join Amanda and Imani at Society, where he'll get updates on their meeting with Michael. 
Devin suggests taking food back to his place for a relaxing evening. Imani and Amanda will be on board. Nate Hastings will appear and joke about knowing how to clear out a room, but they let him know he's not the reason they're leaving. In fact, Imani won't be so sure she's taking her meal to go anymore. Amanda will get annoyed and warn Imani to stop the flirting since Nate is with Elena Dawson but Imani will view it as harmless. Once Imani heads over to the bar where Nate is, Amanda will express concern to Devin. He won't be as worried since Nate and Elena went through a lot to get back together. Devin won't think Nate's going to blow it, so Amanda will hope he's right for Elena's sake. As for Imani, she'll enjoy some fun banter with Nate as she asks for his thoughts on Amanda's job offer. Nate will know that not everyone can work with a sibling, but he'll think Amanda is great and will argue this is a stellar opportunity. Suddenly, Naya's call will interrupt their chat, so Imani will step away to take it. Imani will end up giving the phone to Amanda, who will push Naya to reveal where she is. Naya panicked and ran, but she didn't want her daughters to worry. She'll stay tight-lipped when it comes to her whereabouts, but Amanda will contend that everything has changed and will urge Naya to come home. At the Chancellor Mansion, Abby Newman Abbott Chancellor, Melissa Ordway, will confess that she had a terrible, vivid dream about Mariah. Abby will talk about how Mariah was running in a field while she tried to get to her along with Tessa and Nina Webster. Abby will add that when she woke up, she had an epiphany and is starting to seriously worry something's wrong. Abby will talk to Tessa and Nina about the strange language in some of Mariah's texts, like when she says your child in a message to Abby. Tessa will pipe up that it's indeed unusual since Mariah always refers to it as our child due to the group effort. Next, Stitch will arrive as somewhat eerie music plays. After Stitch hears the gang's latest concerns, he'll agree that the language is odd and implies Mariah's feeling disconnected from the baby. Abby will wish Tessa could just go talk to Mariah, but Tessa will point out that the location services is turned off on Mariah's phone. Stitch will note that there might be a way to trace the texts with a specialized app. He'll think he could look into it for them, but Nina will worry about crossing the line and making Mariah resent them for not giving her space. Since Mariah promised to return in time for her doctor's appointment a week from now, they'll all opt to wait until they hear from her again. Stitch will point out that the offer stands if Abby, Tessa and Nina change their minds. Stitch will also get to the reason for this visit, which is to reveal he's taking the chief of surgery position at Memorial and moving back to Genoa City. Stitch will insist he just has to head back to Iowa for a few days to pack and check on Max Rayburn. He'll explain that it'd be too traumatic to uproot Max from his facility, which isn't that far of a drive anyway. Stitch will add that he's going to need a place to live and will wonder if Abby's willing to help him check out some furnished apartments before he goes. Abby will seem uncertain at first, but Nina will push her to take advantage of the distraction. After Stitch finds the perfect place with Abby's help, they'll share a pleasant conversation in the park. Stitch will find out his favorite Thai restaurant is gone, so he'll have to find a new one, or just eat at society a lot. Stitch will praise Abby's business and will thank her for helping him house hunt, but Abby will be the grateful one since this is the most normal she's felt in a long time. Before Stitch leaves, he'll tell Abby that he hopes she hears something less cryptic from Mariah. Stitch will also insist that Abby will be the first to know once he's back in town. At the Chancellor Mansion again, Tessa will worry that maybe they should have taken Stitch up on his offer. Nina will contend that she's no expert on this sort of thing. She'll point out that Mariah is the woman Tessa loves, so this has to be Tessa's call. Once Tessa's alone, she'll text Mariah to plead for a hint. Tessa will note that if something's wrong and Mariah doesn't know how to tell them, or can't tell them, then she should send Tessa a clue to help her understand. We'll keep you posted as other your news becomes available. The young and the restless spoilers say this missing Mariah story will take another unsettling turn soon, so stay tuned.